plug the uh, uh, audio. Can you hear me all right? There we are. I'll turn myself up a bit. Uh, it's actually the computer that runs the audio stream thing. Oh, hang on a minute. I, oh, I haven't done... Oh, you know what I haven't done, don't you? Hit the record button. Just a minute now. We'll have to do it all over again. Just a minute now. Just a minute. Just a minute now. Will someone please tell me how can I remember to hit the record button when I start? Every single time I forget to do it. I've got a bit of paper here written in front of me, record. Hit record button and I still don't do it. It's one of those things, isn't it? Not to worry. Anyway, um, I was all kind of prepared. I was, I've been running a bit late today because there was a bit of a problem with one of the broadcast computers. Basically. You have to put a load of numbers into it and it sends me or whoever's doing a show to somewhere else. And that is that somewhere else is where you log into and listen to. Right. And um, I had to do a virus uh, upgrade thing. OK, I did do it three days ago. And for three days, this thing has been pointing at me for showing me a message. Please restart your computer. Now, I hate doing that. Because more often than not, something goes wrong. So, I close the thing down, OK? Close the thing down, hit the um, uh, 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 up, uh, uh, restart button, start it up again, and guess what? We couldn't connect to the, to the people that supply the audio stream thing after that. And I spent about an hour sorting that, and somehow, and I have no idea how this happened, somehow... Um, the uh, numbers got changed on the computer. So that's what, what the problem was. But it took me about an hour to work that out. And it kept saying to me, wrong password. So we got there, but that made me late for everything else. So I didn't leave the house till about quarter past one. Got on my bike, went into town, popped into the bank there. Time I got back here, it was half past two, and I was starving, absolutely starving. So I thought, I'll have some beans. I seem to have become suddenly addicted to Heinz baked beans and sausages. Do you like those? They come in a can. <gasps> oh, they are to die for, I'm telling you now. Heinz baked beans and sausages in a can. Only 89 pence at the moment in Sainsbury's. Special offer, buy 200 of the cans. Bit difficult to get 200 cans on the bike, otherwise I would have done so, right? So I've had these beans and sausages, okay? In between eating half of it, I came upstairs, turned everything on so that I'm ready to sit here and chat nice and calmly to you. Right? So I've done that. Come back downstairs, finish it off. I looked at the clock and it was like five to three. Now, I like to be in here at... 25, half past two, 25 to three before I start. So I can get all my bits of paper ready and all that. And roughly things were in order, but not quite as I wanted them. And I looked and I thought, oh my, I must get out very quickly. Now, I had neglected to remember that in the kitchen at the moment, I've been polishing the floor, okay? Three quarters of it is done now, right? With this stuff you put on to make it all nice and glossy and that. And the other quarter, and you have to leave it for kind of three days. You can walk on it after three hours, but then you mustn't wash it or anything for three days, right? So I did that Monday and Tuesday this week, as you remember if you were watching or listening to the show. So this morning, after I got up, I know I'm jumping about all over the place here. This morning, after I got up, I thought, right, let's prepare the other part of the floor. So I washed it, you know, just a mop and bucket. I did look like... um. Like one of those, you know, the one of the mop ladies in hospitals. I looked one of those. I did look like one of those. Although I just want to point out I'm not actually from the Philippines. OK, because I know a lot of those ladies and that who do the uh, uh, auxiliary service, auxiliary services. I'm not allowed to call them cleaners. No, absolutely not. Auxiliary services. That's what they do. Uh, quite a lot are from the Philippines. And I want to point out I'm not actually from the Philippines. I am English, OK? Not that that would be a problem. But I just want to say, in case you were kind of getting a bit confused, oh, is he from the Philippines? No, I'm actually English. All right? I am English, not from the Philippines, but I did look like someone 
who works in a hospital, possibly from the Philippines, who was mop mopping the floor. So I'm mopping the floor, <clears throat> wasn't too dirty the water, so I just give it one go, and then, but to do that, I had to move the chair, uh, the, sorry, the table, I've got a lovely glass table, glass and wooden table downstairs, and I had to move that really close to the door, so the door will only open a certain amount, and quite honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a marvel how I can get my fat bum through that door at the moment. Anyway, so the table's moved there, the door only opened so far, floor's cleaned. Coming back to now, so I've finished my dinner, looked at the clock, it's five to three in the afternoon. I thought, I must rush upstairs. I've picked up my tray with my plate because I don't really sit eating at the table, do you? Now, I always have it on my lap in front of the telly. I've actually just been watching uh, this week's edition of The World's Strictest Parents. Wonderful programme on BBC Three. And it was these two teenagers and they've been sent to India with an Indi Indian family to try and sort them out because they're like a bit tear away. Did anyone see that really good program? That really good. So I've picked up my tray with the empty plate on it, knife and fork on there, half a cup of tea. I've gone towards the kitchen door. I've kind of opened it carefully, you know, because there's a handle. And you have, unless you put the handle down, you can't open the door. Put the handle down kind of with my elbow. And then I've gone to push through. And, of course, the door will only open so far. And the tea and the plate all on the floor, dear. The tea all down the side of the door. And it's five to three. And I think, oh, my God, I'm going to be late. And one thing I don't like to be is late. OK? I may not be the best. I may not be the best DJ or the best karaoke man or the best radio person. But I won't be late. And I will only be away if I absolutely can't get here, i.e. stuck in traffic or very ill. If I have a cold or a sore throat or a headache, I will be here. OK? But, and I hate to be late. I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, oh, my God. And all this tea is running down my lovely white door. Uh, you have to clean it, so I quickly got the flash orange cleaner. Have you got any? Have you tried that flash orange cleaner? Oh, it's wonderful, dear. <sniffs> smell that, smell that flash, dear. We love it. Just a minute, I've got to do something on the internet. Oh, I've just forgotten something. Uh, just a minute. Oh, is it? I wonder if my friend Matt's there. Well, I think he possibly is. Matt in London. Hello, Matt. I know you're there. Just a minute. Uh, one second. I've forgotten to do... See, I forget to do things. It's it's horrendous. Oh, well, that's better. Um, where was I? So I got my flash orange cleaner, sprayed it. <laughs> Beautiful smell of oranges. You know, I wonder why they... Why don't they do or strawberry cleaner? Or apricot cleaner? Why is it orange? I, you can get lemon as well, can't you? I think you can get lime cleaner as well. Can you get lime cleaner? But you can get those other three. Anyway, so I quickly sprayed the door down, <clears throat> um, uh, wiped up the floor as quick as I could, got up here uh, and quickly made another cup of tea because I lost half of that other one and I can't... I can't be having something to eat and then come and talk to you without having a cup of tea in between. It's just impossible. Absolutely impossible to do that. And um, so that was my, um, my little... Uh, 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 ordeal this afternoon. Well, lucky to be here. Lucky to be here, really. Lucky to be on this planet, to be honest. There we are. OK, boys and girls, um, we're going to do some uh, emails, hopefully, uh, throughout the course of uh, the show today. I'm only here for an hour today, and, of course, uh, Tom Harris is up after me at uh, four o'clock, all right? Uh, got some messages coming through already. Good morning to Danny, who reports that I am buffering. Uh, yes, I, I, that should be all right now. That should be all right now. OK? Should be all right now. Uh, Fagash Lil suggests a post-it note on my microphone to remind me to record. Actually, that would work. Because then it's right in front of me, isn't it? Have I got a post-it note? Oh, no! Cards have fallen down now. I've got these cards. Just a minute. Cards there. I've got post-it notes somewhere. Have we got post-it notes? I thought we had post-it notes in here somewhere. I know I've got some. I've got one here with a phone number written down, you see. Post-it note with a phone number written down. There we are. I could just put that on. That would work, wouldn't it? 
Yes, that, that, that absolutely would work. Thank you, Fagash Leal. Can you keep reminding me to do that, Fagash Leal, until I'm sorted? Okay? Oh, and Fagash Leal says, I know you like to be presentable, Mr. Reardon. Please sort your collar out. Sorry, half of it was tucked in. That's again because I have been topless for most of the day, but I wouldn't put you through that ordeal. Okay? I have got a red T-shirt on this afternoon. Got to say a very good evening to, uh, a very good afternoon to uh, the lovely people, of course, who are joining us via 1,000 mics. Good evening, 1,000 mic people. I hope you're well. There is a Skype number, by the way, if you want to send a Skype message. My Skype is United Kingdom Radio. All one word, United Kingdom Radio. Of course, you can only Skype in if you know the show's live. How do you know this is live or not recorded? I shall now tell you. It is Saturday afternoon, 11... Uh, just coming up to 12 minutes past three on a Saturday afternoon on uh, July the 10th, OK? So have a look at your clock. If it's July the 10th, if it's Saturday afternoon and if it's 12 minutes past three UK time, you know this show is live and you can join in. If it's not then you can't join in, because we play recordings out as well. All right. Vicky says, don't forget the record button. Well, I did. Once again, I did, Vicky. Sorry. Very sorry. Good morning to Suko from New York. Had a hard time tuning in, but gotcha now. Everything comes to those who wait, Suko. Everything comes to those who wait, including people waiting to go on holiday. Oh, Danny says it's fine now. Thank you, Danny. Danny in Wales, from the valley. Hello, Danny, from the valley. Everything comes to those who wait. And Mikey Holt, our youngest presenter here on United Kingdom Radio, is off on holiday on Monday to the wonderful Florida. Oh, Mikey, we are jealous. We are absolutely jealous. I love it. I have been very, very lucky and have been three times. Three times. Unbelievable. So you will have a wonderful time there. Do As I said to you, uh, I think I spoke to you on the show the other day, do not spend the entire time, OK, taking photographs. It will be very interesting when you come back, Mikey, to find out... <laughs> to find out what the Americans think of Young chavs. Do let us know. I just hope that you don't get to... I'm looking through my microphone hole here. That's fine. I just hope that you're not stopped before you get into the country and questioned about a certain incident that we found out about that happened in Tesco's the other day, Mikey on the last show. Now, if you missed the last show, you can watch all the old shows again. They go back five years. Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, OK? Mikey did the show yesterday at six o'clock, uh, at seven o'clock, uh, he does Fridays, except for the next couple of weeks, because he's away on holiday. And it was very good. It was very amusing. I find it hilarious. However, he did report me to the police while on air for slander. Didn't you? And, he, and he, he had his little posh voice and said, I'm not a chav. <laughs> I'm not a chav, he says, in his posh voice. <laughs> Mikey, next time, I'm, I'm very impressed with the video you did yesterday. OK? But if you're not a chav, if you're not a chav, you're going to have to dress a little bit more presentable on air. You know, it's no co coming on with a scruffy old T-shirt. We need shirt and tie. We absolutely need shirt and tie. Can we have shirt and tie next time you're on air, please, Mikey Holt? And then I might consider, I might consider withdrawing my statement that you are a chav. OK? Shirt and tie, please. Shirt and tie. Got to say hello to uh, some people listening via... Tango Radio. Tango! 
I like an orange. Do you like an orange tango? Perhaps you could rename the station Orange Tango Radio. We like a tango. The tangy taste of orange tango is very nice. Oh, cherry tango. He likes cherry tango, apparently. Cherry... Oh, no, no, no. It's like that cherry cola. That is vile. Do they, can you still get cherry cola? I'm not sure if you can... It, it's Sean from Tango. Hello, Sean. Tango, ra tango, cherry tango radio. We like, we like that, Sean. We do like that. Now, Danny in Wales has been to Florida three times as well. Perhaps, actually, I'm looking for someone to go with, Danny. Would you like to come with me? Do you think we'd be suitable people to go to uh, Disney and Florida? But I don't do any other fast rides. I get that. It's a bit scary, really. I like It's a Small World. Actually, Danny, are you, do you want to give us a ring? We'll talk about your recent trip to Florida so that we can fill in Mikey E. Bolt on the details. OK? Actually, we'll, we'll, give, um, we'll give Danny a ring and uh, see if he's around. And then we can talk about Florida. Let me try. I don't know if he's actually there at the moment. We'll give it a go. There you are. Hello, Danny. Hello. And, uh, we oh, do you want to turn off my audio stream and then I'll, uh, we'll commence our communication? There, there we you? go. Done already, is it? Yes. So you've been to Florida three times as well? I have, yes. How Very old, interesting. How old were you? Uh, first time I was 11. Uh, next time I was 13. And last time I was 16. You were 16? The last time I went, yeah. Um, which, which, uh, do you, was there, um, which was the best time you went? I bet it was the first time. Uh, yes, it was, because I was a child. Yeah, yeah. It's very magical, isn't it, when you're a child? It is. You, you. Well, I'm not going to, you know, spoil the surprise for Mikey. Oh, no, you won't spoil any surprises, but, I mean, give him an idea. I mean, uh, I'm assuming you don't go on any of those terrible fast rides, do you, Danny? I do. I love I love my fast rides. Oh, love my, my big God. Rides. Well, I don't think I'd be able to come with you, then, I'm afraid. Well, let's just say Mickey Mouse is real, Chris. He is real. Well, I know that. You see, you see him walking around all the time. With Minnie Mouse's girlfriend. Yes. We've, we've just had a complaint, apparently. Sit still, the mirror ball is reflecting on the camera. <laughs> Actually, should I turn the camera around a little bit then and uh, let's see if we can stop that happening. Is it kind of glinting at you, is it? I, I don't know. What's your favourite part of it, then? Um, my favourite park, or park... Park. Park. My favourite bit is the um is the big rides area where they all, where all the big rides are particularly uh places like space mountain um thunder mountain what are you doing with that microphone it's a bit ish oh i'm i'm just waving it around well please don't wave it around just keep it still sorry keep it still have you any intention of going again to disney or have you kind of done it already now and that's it well we want to go to Las Vegas as our next holiday. Is this your family, is it? Yeah, everyone wants to go to Las Vegas. Yeah, see, I'd like to go there and see some shows, but the whole um, the whole gambling thing wouldn't do anything for me at all. I'm really not sort of one of those people who stands for hours on fruit machines. Are you? Oh, Danny, that microphone's cutting out badly, mate. Can you hear me now? Yeah. What are you doing to it? Nothing. It's, going, it's stopped now. It's fine now. It's fine now. Yeah. Do you do um, the gambling on machines and all that business? We do, yes. We do. I think we're going to have to let you go, Danny, because it's so bad, that connection. It keeps coming and going. I don't know why. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh, you, I was talking to you on the... F Actually, I'll ring you back. I'll ring you straight back. Let's see if that sorts out the problem, all right? All right. OK. Right, we'll try this again and uh, see what happens. Um, there we are. There we are, let's try this again. All right, you with me? I'm with you, is that better? See if that's any better now. I think it's I think it's your microphone. What was you saying about your bike earlier? Because I was talking to you on the Facebook, weren't you? And you were saying something about a bike story that you've got. Oh, yes, I went out on my bike last night. What, late? Yeah, um, it was about seven o'clock-ish. Oh, you mustn't do that. It's too late to go out in Wales. Ah. It's dangerous. We were going through a forest. Oh, at seven o'clock at night? Yes. It's a bit dark, isn't it? 
And then I, because I was going to my friend's house, I was. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I had to go up these steps. Now it was like climbing the giant's causeway with these steps with these bi- with this bike. <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, I've never seen a steeper steps. And I got to the top, and the bike just fell apart. Well, you mean you dropped it? Part of the wheel come off. Oh, my God. How did that happen, then? I, I don't know. Maybe because I was pulling this, the bike up the steps, and it was bang, 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 all the way up the steps, and it was... Well, you're lucky <laughs> that didn't happen when you were hurtling down a hill somewhere. Luckily, because all the way down, I went round the roads, and one of the roads is very steep, and if the wheel come off, I would have crashed and it hit a wall. You could have gone off the side of the mountain. And I then know. I bet all your friends were going round behind you singing, she'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round... The... Is that a Welsh folk song, is it? I don't know. I don't know. No. They just sing it to me. <laughs> She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain, coming round the mountain, coming round the mountain when she comes. Don't you know that one? I do know that one, yes. Good. Well, you could have joined in there. I, I can only sing in the shower, I'm afraid, Chris. Sorry. I bet the only song that you know in Wales is that, that what is it? La, uh, what does it go? Wheels, wheels, la, da, 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 da. I like that one. The Welsh National Anthem. The Welsh National Anthem. Now, do be careful on your bike. I'd just like to tell you, it's called The Land of My Fathers is the name of the anthem. Land of My Fathers. Would you like to sing as the full version, Danny? No. Thank you, Chris. Why not? We want to hear your vocals, talented skills. I cannot sing. Only in the shower. I mean, a little bit later on, we're going to be teaching, hopefully, Mikey Holt some hymns. Because he, he's, he, is not, he, is a he doesn't believe in anything. I'm afraid, other than me. He believes in me and that's it. And I'm trying to teach him, you know, a little bit of religion and he's not having any of it. Well, we, me and you go to church every Sunday evening, don't well, we? that's it. We do. Thank we do. We're that. very good girls. We do. We do. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> All right. Speak to you soon. Cheerio. Bye-bye now. All right. Bye-bye. There we are. Young Danny in Wales there. Having problems with his bike. So, Mikey, do have a wonderful time in Florida and don't spend I know that he checked his little bank account today and there was more money in there than you thought wasn't there you lucky thing he's got a lot of cash in that bank waiting by the way what are you going to buy over there have you any idea what... oh dear I... Ooh, I think we might be in trouble now uh, who's on line 215 look on your video oh yes Mikey Holt in a shirt and tie what a shame not everyone can see this why shame we can't all see this? That's better, Mike. Can you just do your tie up a bit? If I can just explain, boys and girls, Mikey Holt has now appeared on the Skype video. He's now got a shirt on and a sky blue tie. Um, but the, the tie isn't... It's, there's a top button undone, which is, dare I say it, a little bit chavvy, Mike. Can you do that top button up, please? And the tie properly. You can't do it, can you? Can you get your mum to do it? Well, is your mum or dad there? I can do it. Is your mum or dad there? There. Is that better? No, it's not. It's still wonky. Look at the tie. There's the... Wait, is your mum or dad there? No. No? We're losing the house. Uh, dad, but he's, he's not coming up here. Oh, just a minute. Can you turn my my, my sound up a bit? So you can hear me louder. Can you do that? Turn the speakers up for yourself. I can hear you you fine. Okay. Dad, can you come and sort my tie out, please? Dad! Uh, Is he coming? Is he coming? Nope. Oh, how disappointing. Now, I'm going to have to point out. out. That's that's not actually, it's not bad at all now. Turn me down now because I can hear myself. That's it. Wonderful. I'm going to have to point out, you actually look quite good now on camera. But I'm concerned about the wall behind you, which looks <laughs> which looks like someone at some point has been ripping off pieces of wallpaper. What has happened behind there? It's all paint there, look. <laughs> it's what? It's paint. It's paint? It's paint. Is it kind of being decorated at the moment or what? No. Well, what is it then? I don't know. Is it supposed to be some sort of um, 
Uh, put, put the tie back on. Put the tie back on. Don't... Oh, no. Ah, disappointing. The shirt's come off and has revealed a cheap old sports... Very, very chavy type sports T-shirt. Shocked and horrified. Although it is green, which is mine and my mother's and I believe Suko's or someone's favourite colour. Was it Jennifer? Could be Jennifer. Someone said it was their favourite colour. <laughs> <laughs> Your head looks funny now. You look like um, an alien. An alien? The, the way you were looking then. You were looking like an alien. Now, have you rung up Tesco's to tell them that they undercharged you to... Th this was what the problem was on Thursday, boys and girls. On the show on our two-hour special on Thursday, I think it was, uh, Mikey Holt revealed that he was undercharged for something by 20 pence at Tesco's and didn't tell them. And you see, this is what the problem is. I mean, it's a typical chavy type thing to do. It really is. Not only that, walking around in track suits. Mikey Holt, track suit. Mikey Holt, I can just see him now, going into the local <laughs> Tesco's <laughs> with empty pockets. Jeez. Stealing things. Stealing things. <laughs> Damn him. Stealing things from Tesco's. <laughs> And he's got these awful chavy blue, sh blue, I don't know what they are. Oh my God, look at the socks. Look at the socks. <laughs> Pink, white and black stripes. How awful are they? God's sake. That, that, well, I don't, I don't think you're ever going to make it on, on the fashion stages at all. Just a bit of leg if you want. Yeah. Mikey, I'm going now. Have a lovely holiday. I will speak to you before you go. I'd like I? to say one more thing. Yes. I am not a chav. I am not a chav. He speak, He tries I to put on that. Chav. He tries to put on that posh voice, doesn't he? Oh, I'm not a chav. I don't have a posh voice. Oh, you have got a posh voice. It's quite a posh voice. No. Why aren't you going to Eton or Oxford or somewhere like that? <laughs> Please don't cry. Uh, go on, boy. cry. Go on. Tell them someone's up. Ring up Childline. Ring up, children. Someone's upset you on the radio. Go on, ring them up. I can't wait to speak to restaurants on the telly and tell her what you've been up to in Tesco's. Uh, no, you're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, read some bloody emails. Oh, you are funny. He's gone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mikey Holt in uh, Grantham in uh, northern England there. Wonderful to talk to him as well. Um... Suko in New York is sending us a message and uh, she says she wants to talk about Mikey's chaviness. So we'll try and get her up on the, on the air. Good morning. Uh, oh, is it morning or afternoon in New York? I don't know. Now she's disappeared. Now, don't you love that? Oh, I want to call about Mikey's chaviness and then she disappears. Oh, oh there I she is. There you are. Hello, Suko. Hello. Hello. What's the time there now then? It's um, 10.28. OK, so early morning on a Saturday then, yeah? Yeah. What, what so, do you normally do in New York on a Saturday morning? Is that a shopping day? Uh, well, I sleep in when I can. Do you? What microphone are you fact, on? I did today. Cool, dear. What microphone are you on? Oh, not, not the one you sent me. Well, it's no good, is it? Why don't you use the setup that you know sounds good? Because I'm in the bedroom on the laptop. Oh, Christ, you're, you're a computer in every room you are, aren't you? You still there? Of course I'm still here. Oh, yeah, we, we do. But you know what? We were doing work all week, so um, uh, my PC isn't connected. Oh dear! Oh, you Oh, that's a big mistake, Suko. Once you're set up, you shouldn't move things around. You wait till you do your show tomorrow. Now. No, but we put a new floor down, so we had to unhook everything. Oh, work around the computer. You don't need a new bit of floor under the computer, do you? Of course we do, and I will be testing it. Don't worry; it will sound great tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, uh, about Mikey's chaviness. Yeah. He's not a chav. Oh, isn't he? You might you want Chav, you, you, you call upon James Dean. He's Chav. They don't know who James Dean is on here. He, can I just fill people in? James Dean works on a very, very small station up north that no one's ever heard of. 
<laughs> okay, and I, including James Dean. You know, James Dean work, works on this station. I mean, you've never heard of him, have you? Be honest, you've never heard of him, and you don't really want to. And if, my God, I saw him a couple of weeks ago. My God, he's put on some weight, hasn't he? Jesus Christ. He's been eating all the pies, that James Dean, I'll tell you that now. I don't know, he doesn't call me too often anymore. Well, there uh, you go. That's because well, you're now a star in your own right here on United Kingdom Radio. Well, that's another thing. Because I wasn't hooked up, I didn't get to download your shows from the earlier this week, which are on too early for me. So um, I listened to them during Sorry, the night. Sorry, Suko, can you, just, can you just hold on a second? I've got my list of regular listeners and friends. I'm just crossing you off that list. Didn't download two podcasts. OK, carry on. Well, I, I listened last night, and um, I think that you're delusional. I mean, it's not the first time I thought that. But, I mean, you think the Queen listens to your show? Oh, she I'm might. probably the know? most famous person who listens to your show. How do you know? How do you know she doesn't listen? Because I'm related to her. No, you're not. We're not related to her at all. Don't lie. You don't I look am. anything like her. I sat opposite you in Pizza Hut in London, and let me tell you now, you are not related to the Queen. Yeah, I'm much more beautiful than she is. But I don't think so, dear. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> you... <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. Lee, Lee Mills has been coming out with some poppycock about trying to get the Queen on this station. And I told him, it's not, if she don't go on the BBC, she's certainly not going to come on here, is she? Although if she did, I'm telling you now, I would personally, if she was to come here to the Mirable Studio, I would personally go out to Bentles, a local department store, and buy some bone china for her tea. There would not be any tea bags. I would pull out all the stops to have the Queen here on United Kingdom Radio. But I don't think And so. I would come over and bake a pie. Oh, no, I couldn't have anyone in the studio at the same time, Suko. Well, I'm telling you, we're well, related. Yeah, but the thing is with you, you're just making a list of celebrities that you've met, aren't you? That's, that's what you're doing. But the thing is, I'm the most famous. Every time... You, you do a show or come on someone else's show, you start mentioning these people that you met. Well, you know, I do work on that lame station up north with James Dean on Sunday. Oh, it's I love it, that lame station up north. I must, I shall have to cut out that sound bite and use it. And in it. that capacity, I do meet famous people because I interview them. And there's lots of pictures on the gallery there. If anyone wants to email me at studio at, at unitedkingdomradio.co.uk, I will send you the link. Just a minute. Where, 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 where did you get that email from? Isn't that it? I don't know that email, unless someone's changed something without telling me. Well, I, I had a personal one. You go still, at unitedkingdomradio.co.uk. You've still got that. Oh, okay. I thought I thought Lee changed it. Oh, no, anyway. no, no, no. Don't take any notice of what anyone else says. Listen to what I say, my darling. All right? Don't, right. don't take any notice of what anyone else comes out with suggestions and that because they lead you up the garden path. They don't want you to succeed, Suko, and I do. I want and no, you to you succeed. Don't. No, you don't because you never play my trail. So I'm going to play it if you don't mind. Go Here on, we then. Go. We're waiting. No, that doesn't work, Suko. We can't hear it. Well... You hey, oh, you see, we can't even hear it, dear. Because I'm on the wrong uh, PC. <sighs> Sorry, folks. No, if you want well, to hear it, just tune a minute. in tomorrow. Suko, can you shut up for 30 seconds? Excuse me? Can you shut up for 30 seconds? OK. Hey, guys and gals. Suko here, all the way from New York. Why not come and join me live on United Kingdom Radio? 
on Sundays from 5 to 6 p.m. UK time. That's 12 to 1 p.m. New York time. I'd love for you to call in and we can chat about many things. So come and join me. Speak soon. Are you happy now, dear? Did you purposely distort it? No, it wasn't distorted. It sounded distorted to you because it's on the Skype. Everyone okay. else heard it perfectly. Okay. Plus, anyway. you're on the computer that you don't usually use, which is always a mistake. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say that I would be proud to be Mikey Chaviness. Oh, you want to be his mum, don't you? I'm very crazy about him. You want to yeah. be Mikey's mum. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I would be I'll tell you proud what, to be as you, want to be as you want to be Mikey's mum, can I suggest to him that he sends his blooming T-shirts over to you for a good ironing because they look a mess, dear. A mess! I'd, I'd be proud to iron his T-shirts. <laughs> Thank you, Suko. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. There we are. The lovely Suko in uh, New York. They're always a pleasure to hear from her. Um, Fag Ashley says, I heard the Queen prefers builder's tea in a mug. Studio uh, was the one that was up there last week. Yes. What are you talking about? Studio was the one that was up there last week. Oh, I don't know anything about that. I know nothing about that, I'm afraid. I absolutely know nothing about that. Uh, Tango Radio says, how do you know? How come you're not in your new studio and you're a chav wearing a chain and a red T-shirt? What do you mean I'm a chav? I never said I wasn't, did I? I have a T-shirt on today, and my gold chain is not a gold chain. It is a religious emblem. It is the, it is the Holy Cross with a little baby Jesus on there as well. It is a religious emblem. It's not a chavy chain. A chavy chain is about ten times the thickness of this and makes their heads hang down low, which is why they're always in a can of lager, which, unfortunately, is probably where Mikey Holt will be in a few years' time. But we remain to be seen. We remain to be seen. Tango Radio says it is shabby because it's shiny. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. OK. Um, apparently Studio at United Kingdom Radio was on there last week. I don't know anything about that at all. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Uh, Danny in Wales says I have a chavy chain. I'd like to see that, actually. I would like to see your chavy chain. And Stace is with us. Hello, Stacey. Who says, uh, for those of us in the Midwest of the US, what is Chavi? Um, Stacey, you remember that TV show you were in? OK, that lad that you helped was a bit of a chav. Sort of a little bit sure of themselves, generally wear tracksuits and usually gold chains. That is a chav. I wonder if there's any pictures of chavs anywhere we can find. Just a minute. Let's chip in something there. English chavs. There you go. Type, I tell you what, Stacey, in, in Google, type in English chavs, and there you will see a picture of chat. Actually, I'll, I'll, um, I'll pass this through to you, actually, Stacey. Just a minute. There we are. English, English chavs. There you go. Church of Chris Martin. And there you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six. There are seven English chavs sitting uh, on a fence waiting to create trouble. <laughs> OK, Stacey. <laughs> and, and it's quite possible that one day Mikey may look like that. He doesn't quite look like that. I think he's practising. He is actually practising, isn't he? Huh? There we are then. <laughs> they can't even walk with their trousers. Tango Radio says, I know, I know. Uh, Stacy says, got it, thanks, that clears it up for me. Looks like something from the Sopranos. <laughs> That's what they're like, these, these lads. And, and the girls as well, it's not just lads who are chavs, girls as well. And the girls look even worse. They've got like bleached blonde hair and they're walking around in tight tracksuit bottoms and looking, dre looking absolutely dreadful. Dreadful. I, I, I have to say I am, I am a little bit like that. Not like one of the girls, mind. I'm a little bit like, I think I'm a little bit chavish, OK? Just a touch. 
hopefully it's not um it's 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 not i'm not i'm not the full version i'm sort of partly you know partly fag ashley says um which one are you in the picture <laughs> just <laughs> just type in english chavs on google and you should get some pictures coming up there okay uh, just a reminder, boys and girls, so, uh, who is it? Uh, four o'clock, Tom Harris. We'll be with you live here on United Kingdom Radio at four o'clock this afternoon. Right now, uh, if you're wondering if the show's live or recorded, it's 20 to four on a Saturday afternoon here in the UK. You can Skype in if you want to. My Skype in number is United Kingdom Radio. OK, Skype in, United Kingdom Radio. Or indeed, you can phone in. We have a local London number. It's not premium rate, local number, 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 London number. And the number is 020 3287 1488. Okay? 020 3287 1488. Stacey reckons I'm more posh than Chav. Thank you very much, Stacey. That's much appreciated. <laughs> now, I've got some emails. Um, Still to get through. That's been kind of building up over the last few weeks. We've only got three left now. Uh, Jennifer writes in. Now, she wrote this uh, about three weeks ago. This is how long we've been waiting to clear these through. So we'll try and do uh, at least one of them, uh, uh, at least one of them on the show today. Um, oh, Danny, no, don't go. You're supposed to be waiting for me. Don't go, Danny. A little private message to Danny there, OK? I'll speak to you afterwards about that. That's, out, that's outrageous. Surely not. Jennifer writes, Hello, Chris, Katie, that's my cat, and all fellow listeners. Hope all is well. I want to comment on the 17th of June show. On the subject of bad breath, because we were talking about bad breath on that programme. And how it is when you're working with the public, OK, and people come up to you and they're talking to you and it just oof, it kind of knocks you back, doesn't it? The breath, as the acid breath comes out of their mouth. Jennifer says, I think bad breath and body odour rank both on the same level. It just depends on the varying degrees of offensiveness. At my previous job, one guy had the worst ever breath. I would never speak to him about it but everyone else spoke to each other about it. It literally smelt like a dead rat or rotting food. You see, you can get this if you don't floss your teeth. Very, very important to floss your teeth, boys and girls, after you've brushed them. And let me tell you this, if you've never flushed your teeth before, or you haven't done it for a long time, okay, then get yourself a bit of floss, do it, and then smell that piece of floss. And if the smell disgusts you and you find it offensive, then just imagine what it is like for everyone else when you're talking to them. Don't do it. You must floss your teeth. It's not expensive. Jennifer says, they say it was due to a stomach condition, but lordy, it was vile. <laughs> I always cringed when he would come into my office to drop off his paperwork or he'd have to discuss something with me. I always had to rush the conversation so I could go outside and throw up. Oh, I bet your breath was bad after that. That's the other thing, isn't it? Certainly when you're younger and perhaps you've gone out to a club or something like that, you've got together with a young lady or a young man, you've had a bit of a cuddle and a kiss, You've carried on drinking, or the other one's carried on drinking, and then, outside, they've been sick. In the gutter. Outside, they've been... And if that's not bad enough, they then turn to you after they've been sick and try to have a kiss. And it is not going to happen, is it? Have you ever had that happen to you? 
Someone's been sick and then they've tried to kiss you. Not even, not, we're not talking about, mm, we're talking about the whole, oh, 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 aren't we? Huh? <laughs> oh, it's vile and awful. Let me just lean back a bit in the chair. I'm, I'm going to relax a little bit. I'm not, not very comfortable today. Can I put my feet up here somewhere? Just a minute. Put my feet up. There we are. Has this ever happened to you, by the way? Has anyone, like, tried to, tried to give you a kiss after they've been sick? Isn't it awful? Really is. Let us know if that's happened to you. My Skype is United Kingdom Radio, or you can phone in as well, 020-3287-1488. There's an email address as well if you're listening to the podcast. Don't feel left out. You can email the show and it should come up to you. Uh, the, the email will come up for you on the next show. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Jennifer carries on. Then being in distributation warehouses for the last 10 years, the men who work putting and pulling things off the shelves or loading and unloading trucks have awful BO. Currently at the cookie tree, it is so hot out in the warehouse. There are fans, but no real, f no real airflow circulating. So being that we're in South Florida, it's as hot inside as it is out. That must be blooming uncomfortable, is it? Sometimes the guys will forget to apply the deodorant. And you can smell them coming. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Do you know, it's not so bad if they have a shower once a day, is it? Have a shower in the morning and then, you know, the smell of fresh sweat on a man actually isn't too bad. It's when it's gone stale and there's new sweat on top of that, which has also gone stale, and then more on top of that. That's when it starts minging, doesn't it? Absolutely minging. Sean says, I love your impression of being sick. Do it again. No. Not unless it's necessary. Thank you very much. <laughs> As for me, the only real time I'm aware that my breath is horrid is after a cup of coffee. Yeah, coffee makes breath smell bad as well, doesn't it? It's horrible. Yuck, as much as I love coffee, it really does a number on my mouth. I have a toothbrush and toothpaste at work and use it regularly and always have gum in my purse. I have a phobia on odours. <laughs> I think we all know that now, Jennifer. Well, can I give out the email again, OK? Do please, please, if you're an emailer to the show and you think now and you have been with us for years and years, just because the show is live doesn't mean you can't email in. I cherish the thought of holding a piece of paper in my hand that you have spent time and trouble typing out. Send us an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. We were also talking about being alone. What's it like to be alone? I am very much alone. Um, how much should I share with you? Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're kind of in full flow and you think... How much further should you carry on with this? What should you tell people and what should you not? I don't know. I'm sitting here at the moment with you there and me here. And we're kind of all together. But I am actually quite a lonely person. I've never found that person. You know? Never, never found that person. I get fed up with people telling me that there's someone out there for everyone. I do get a bit fed up with that. How many times do we have to hear that thing? You know, and it's like, sometimes I think um, of my mum, who's uh, died in the year 2000, and often her and my nans would say, oh, don't worry, someone will come along. I actually don't, but I think my mum and nans were right about every single thing except that one. I'm convinced I shall be alone. Now, other people would say, if you're going to be negative, that doesn't help either. But that's just how I am on the subjects. Now, uh, so we were talking about that on the previous show. And Jennifer writes, on the subject of being alone, she said, it's tough. You remember the old man I work for and his cows? Jennifer works for a, a, a farmer and some cows, OK? 
um, his name Bear. Being that his wife died about a year ago, two weeks after Michael Jackson, and they were married for what seemed like a lifetime, yesterday would have been her birthday and would have been 80. He's 79, and I thought he took her death well, but I'm sure behind closed doors he cried. Because what we were saying on the last show is that, yes, although I am alone and lonely, is that better? Is that less lonely than if you had a partner, a wife or a husband for years and years and years and then they died? That must be the most lonely thing ever. It happened to my mum. It's about to happen to my aunt. <coughs> Excuse me. It's about to happen to my aunt. And my other aunt as well um, has had her husband died. After being together for 40, over 40 years. And then suddenly, that person's gone. Now, you can't tell me that I am as lonely as someone who has had someone for so many years and then that person is taken away from them. So I'm just kind of filling you in on how the other show went, all right? Jennifer says, once in a while we talk about his wife and he tears up. She did everything for him and to lose her must have been a shock into being lonely. Ever since she passed, I call him daily, usually in the morning, to check on him, see how he is and try and get him to laugh. And that's a good thing to do, you know? Perhaps... Wherever you are in the world, listening or watching the show, maybe you know someone elderly who is on their own. Can you make a point of whenever you see them, just say hello. You may never have spoken to this person before, but perhaps you've seen them in the street, maybe you've seen them in the local post office or in a shop, and you keep seeing them. Elderly people are very, very lonely in some cases. And just a simple hello can go a long way. You may not get the response. You may not get a nod. But it's worth trying. Just to make someone feel a bit nicer. Next time you're out, see an old person on their own. Nod your head or wink. And say hello. All right. Jennifer goes on to say, if I somehow miss calling him, he will call me. For the first four months after her death, he would call me two or three times a day, asking how to do things like boiled eggs, or if I could come over and do the dishes or laundry, which I still do for him. I know it's got to be just miserable to lose someone. I know firsthand, but my spouse hasn't passed away, thank God. Being that we live one and a half thousand miles away isn't that easy. Um, we've been married for four and a half years, but he left to move to Oklahoma for a job two and a half years ago. So being that we were practically newlyweds and he ups and leaves me was devastating. I cried for months. My girls did too, and they see and saw how his absence has affected me. It has made me a harder person, and I do have quite a mean streak since he left. I am alone, but I don't find myself lonely, especially when my kids are home with me for the week, and I have my mum round and all my cats, dogs and chickens. Pets are wonderful things, aren't they? I do know that sometimes if I feel a bit down for any reason at all, um, often I'll... I'll pick up the cat or something like that, you know? I've just got someone on the line at the moment. If Just hold on, I'll, I'll be with you in a second, OK? Be with you in a second. Um, it's true that you have to stuff... You, you, as in me, have stuff to occupy your minds. You cope better with the absence. But when you go home from having dinners together to eating bacon and eggs alone for supper alone and then to bed alone, that's when it hurts the most, when you've got to get into bed on your own after being with someone for so many years. I cannot comprehend the loneliness that my mother would have gone through when my dad died. I cannot comprehend that. So in that way, I and other people who are on their own, 
possibly with us on the show today. In that sense, we are lucky. So I empathise with you, Chris. Being alone does suck, but don't let it get you down too much because it may prevent you from opening up to someone new. You may get yourself into a rut and not notice someone right in front of you. I think that's true as well. I think you, you could be very, very true there, Jennifer. All right, my darling. There is a little bit more to um, that email, but we've only got about four minutes left uh, before our dear, dear friend uh, Tom Harris is up at four. So we'll hold on for that. Did we have someone on the line or not? Um, no, I don't think we had someone on the line. Now, I had a very, very important email. Just a minute. Which I haven't um, uh, uh, taken off the, uh, off the printer. So here it is here. And it's from uh, someone who used to write in regularly to the show. Matty, the Tasmanian devil. Who's been watching all the shows and has sent in an email. So have, hello, Matty. And we were talking about viruses on computers the other day. And Matty reckons... I should buy a PC condom for my computer and it will keep out all the unwanted viruses and Trojan horses and spyware out of my computer. So thank you, Matty. Thank you very much for that. All right, sir. Nice to hear from you. Once again, that email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, have we got any more messages here? I think, um, I think Gary, I think Gary did try and call in. Gary, we'll take a call. Uh, hello, Gary. Hello. Hello, Gary, how are you? All right. Nice to hear from you. Now, I'm afraid you've called in right at the end of the show. I've got about, I can, I've got about a minute with you, and then Tom Harris is taking over, my friend, OK? OK. Have you got anything to say, my friend? Uh... It's nice to hear from you. You've been away, have you, or what? No, no, I haven't pulled up in the month. Oh, OK. You'll have to join us on Tuesday or Thursday. I'm here Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 o'clock in the morning now. Yeah, but uh, how, how is uh, Gwen? Gwen. Um, Gwen is... Thank you so much for asking, Gary. That, that means an awful lot to me that uh, someone's asked about Gwen. I know there's a lot of people um, waiting. She's still with us. She's... Uh, yep, yeah, she's, yeah, she's still with us. <laughs> She gets a lot of visitors, I'm very pleased to say. And um, I don't know if you know, I did a karaoke night on Tuesday and someone brought down a video camera and um, we all did, like, a little song each. And someone will have taken that video, I think they went yesterday, they took the video camera to her in the hospital and she was able to watch um, the songs that we sang. That's so sweet. All right? But, uh, you know... There is always hope. There is always a chance something can turn around. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just listening to your, your, your past shows and it was really, really touching on everybody was going in and talking about it. Yeah, lovely. Well, Gary, yeah. I've, got, I've got to go now because Tom's on at four o'clock, OK? OK. All yeah. right. Lovely to talk to you. Perhaps I'll talk to you during the week. Oh, he's gone very quickly there. There we are. That's it for me uh, on the show today. Uh, don't forget Tom Harris with you at four o'clock. I'll see you again live here at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. UK time, 11 o'clock Tuesday morning. Tom Harris up at four, OK? Mm -hmm.